Hey all, good evening and welcome to this week's Wednesday Worship at Home. My name is Chris Carver. I will be your host for this week's service. Uh, up here on the upper tier of the Carver Conservatory, we have our, uh, our rosemary and our basil and our green onions. I just pruned a lot of the dead out of the green onions. And then we have some tomatoes over here as well. Tomatoes are looking good. So, um, just wanted to share that with you and give you guys a little update on our on the greenery that is... Uh, and a little spider there as well. Uh, the greenery that is um, living in the uh, in the upper area here, and um, things are are moving along and growing fantastically. So, getting ready to leave on uh, another trip. I was out of town recently and uh, about ready to head out of town again. This time with the the kids, and um, it'll be a nice nice welcome break. Um, and uh, Grammy is on watering duty to keep everything looking green and pretty. So. Uh, that's that's what's happening here. Um, if you would like to host an upcoming Wednesday Worship at Home service, please email Pastor Matt or myself. The email address will be down here below. Um, like I said, I'm getting ready to go away, so we will um, we will start picking families again and start reaching out to volunteers uh, after I get back. So um, so be on the lookout for uh, either myself or Miss Paula. Uh, Miss Paula Ellison or uh, Pastor Matt asking you to volunteer to host a Wednesday Worship at Home. And I'm going to hand it off to myself as we use the Around the World devotion devotional again for this week's service. We begin this week's service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We open this week with the recital of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge both the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We move into the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we conclude our opening with the, uh, the evening prayer from Martin Luther, found in your small catechisms, also found on your Around the World devotional morning and evening prayer. We pray our evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. This week's scripture uh, is going to be from Luke, um, chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. But before we get to that, I'm going to hand it over to the Galilee singers so they can open us up in song.
This evening's scripture reading is from Luke chapter 19, or 16, verses 19 through 31. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried, and in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all of this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who, sh who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment." But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This week's catechism lesson, we're going to get into the second article of the uh, Apostles' Creed, which talks about redemption, our being saved. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge both the living and the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won, from, won me from all sin, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from the dead, lives and reigns for all eternity. This is most certainly true. Before we uh, dive headlong into this week's devotional, let's join together in a brief time of prayer. Heavenly Father, bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power to peace to convert those not yet your own, and to confirm those who have come to the one true saving faith. May your word pass from the ear to the heart, from the heart to the lips, and from the lips to the life that as you have promised, your word may achieve the purpose for which you send it. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What a powerful reading that we hear this week in, in Luke. And that reading closes with some very, very wise words. You have this rich man who lived a life, it doesn't say he lived a life of great faith, it doesn't say that he lived a, a life of great servitude, it just simply says that he was clothed in purple and fine linen and he feasted sumptuously every day. That's a, that's a great life to live, don't get me wrong, but that is a man who walks by sight. And as we walk in our faith journeys, we walk by faith and not by sight. That's something very important that we have to remember in our faith journeys, wherever we are in our faith journeys. Remember, we are not all of us are in the same place. We will never all be in the same place. That's not how this works. That's not how this was ever meant to work. That's not how this will ever work in the future. We all come to the table with different place in our lives with our, our walk in faith. Some of us are still in the 
what I'd like to call the Sunday school phase, where the answer to all the questions are Jesus loves you. And what a great answer. That is the greatest answer of all. Some of us come to the table with uh, an ability to, to preach, teach. I, I'm, I'm a student of that kind of work. Uh, Pastor Matt has been a great mentor. Mr. George Smith has been a great mentor. Um, my father-in-law has been a good mentor. Um, I have enjoyed the teachings of Pastor Brian Wolfmuller, who is a Lutheran pastor out in Austin, Texas. Um, just a broad spectrum of, of people that uh, have influenced my, my teaching and my preaching. And not everyone is called to do that. And I have been called. I have. I was challenged by actually Pastor Gary James, another one of my mentors. And um, I think we should get you up here reading and, and uh, standing up in front of the congregation and doing things. That's how that whole conversation started. And uh, yeah, so come a long way since. Excuse me one moment. How are these are bothering today? So throat's a little bleh. There's, a, there's this temptation, I guess is a good way to put it. There's this, this thought process that if, if we could only see Jesus, if we could only show Jesus to our friends, if we could only show Jesus to our family and to our loved ones, we could show him his signs and his wonders, then everyone around us would believe. Again, great, great conceptual thought great, great, uh, yeah, great ideology. But again, that's not how this works. We've been called, we have been saved, we have been, been blessed by the Holy Spirit to believe with faith, without seeing. And that's a very hard thing to do. Some people, even if you give them the keys to the kingdom, they still wouldn't believe that the kingdom existed. And that's, <laughs> that's where this rich man was. So he dies and Lazarus dies. Lazarus being riddled with sores that the dogs would come and lick the sores. That's, that just sounds gross. That just sounds horrible. What, a, what, a, what an absolutely abhorrent way to live and yet when he's called he is greeted and placed by the angels and taken and placed at the side of father Abraham and then Lazarus sees or is seen by the rich man and wants him to send Lazarus to him to even in the afterlife, continue to be his servant. And Abraham says to him, that's, that's not how this works. Uh, I can't send him to you. He will not come to you to dip his finger in water and cool your tongue because you are in peril. He's blind to the fact that there is something greater going on here. Someone greater going on here. But Faith is not born in our eyes, but in our ears. And at the close in the reading tonight, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. These are the words of Jesus Christ. This is the red letter text in Luke. This red letter text is Jesus saying, people are going to have all of the information that they need. They will have the text of the prophets. They will have the text of my life here on earth. And yet I know because they don't have everything that they feel that they need, nothing will ever be good enough. I've given you all that you need for your faith, to share your faith, to share my word. But someone is going to rise from the dead and still people will not be convinced. 
he is foretelling his own crucifixion. He, he, he's telling this, this crowd, and this, this group that's with him in this moment, someone should rise from the dead. If we won't believe through our ears, hearing the word of God, then we will not believe through any other miracles either. Remember the, the rich man asks Lazarus to send, or asks Abraham rather, to send Lazarus back from, in the form of a spirit, in the form of a ghost, to his five brothers, because his, his five brothers need to hear the word. And Abraham's like, no. Nope, they have the words. They have all of the words that they need. They have every piece of text that they need. This still goes on to this day. There are archaeologists who are out there who are working nonstop to prove the facts of the Bible through archaeological digs. These digs uncover great, great archaeological finds, great pieces of history. Pieces of history that have been preserved so that we can see and continue to believe. It reinforces with fact the stories of the Bible, which are the inerrant word of God. But it's written, it's a book. So somebody wrote it down, so there's got to be problems with it. And, and, you know, they didn't write it down in the beginning. They just passed the story along from person to person to person, and then it's like playing a game of telephone. No, it's not. It's not like that at all. The, the word of God is the word of God. It's not wrong. It's You may not like it. You might not like what it has to say. There's a lot of bad and evil things that the, the Bible likes to point out. It likes to point out our sin. It likes to point out our faults. It happens through law. It happens through parables. People don't like to be told that they're wrong. Nobody likes to be told they're wrong. I'm, I'm one of those people. Tell me I'm wrong. I, I get a little upset. But through all of this, I'm, I'm not wrong in any of it. Because I'm not, I'm not here preaching my word. I'm here preaching the word of the Lord. I'm here to share the word, the news, the message with you. The Lord in his mercy has poured out his word into our ears. It gets poured out into our ears and into our hearts and then onto our lips on a weekly basis striking our hearts, our minds, and even our eyes so that we see by faith. And what is that faith? That faith is that we believe that Jesus Christ was born of a Virgin Mary, at, as was prophesied. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate, as we talked about in our catechism this lesson this week. He was taken to, the, to Pontius Pilate. He was put on trial. Pontius Pilate wanted nothing to do with him, sent him to Herod. Herod wanted nothing to do with him, sent him back to Pontius Pilate, and Pontius Pilate is like, okay, so I'm going to scourge this man. And through all of that, Jesus then takes the lashing of the 39 whips with the, with the whip. He's placed on the cross. He carry, carries that cross. And then he can't carry that cross any longer because he's been beaten so badly. So... A, a traveler is chosen out of the crowd to continue to carry the cross for Jesus. And we don't know anything after about that man once he gets to that point where he, he gets the cross to where it needs to go so that Jesus can be nailed to that cross. No idea if he just left or was he taken prison. We don't know. But what we do know is that Jesus was hung on that cross. He hung there for three hours. He sweat because it was the, the high point of the day. Lots of sweat, lots of loss of bodily fluid. He was bleeding from his, his wounds. He was hanging in a, in a position that would asphyxiate his body. He was offered a sponge with sour wine vinegar on it. He looked to his father. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The clouds darkened. Jesus died. The earth shook. This is all documented fact. And then the miracle happens. The miracle of Christ defeating death and the devil.
freeing us from the eternal damnation that we truly and rightly deserve. We, we've been freed of that because of his death on that cross and his resurrection. That is the propitiation. That is the fulfillment of all of the law. His death, his perfect life, and his death fulfilled all of the law so that we, believers in Jesus Christ, could be with him in heaven forever and ever. That is the greatest of the miracles. And our book talks about it, and we talk about it on a weekly basis. Pastor Matt does it three times a week on Saturday and Sunday services. We do it here on the Wednesday Worship at Home services. We have Bible studies going on all week. I am going to be assisting Mr. George at the um, Jennifer, no, not Jennifer Road, uh, the Ordnance Road uh, Correctional Facility tomorrow. We have people going into prisons to minister the words, Lord, and share the good news of the world to the world, and people still don't believe it. But we do. We have believed with our ears. We have believed with our minds, our hearts, our souls. We have faith. Jesus redeems us through our faith in him. Not because of any works that we do. There's nothing that we can do in order to be to receive his grace. It's given to us. It's a free gift. A free gift from God. A free gift that we have been saved. A free gift that he turned his life over for us so we can again join him in the kingdom of heaven. That is what this week's devotion is all about. And as we conclude this week's devotion, let's join together in a very, very brief prayer. Lord, keep me steadfast in your word. And in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. pray with me as I pray the psalm of the week. Uh, this is going to be from Psalm chapter 13 uh, verses 5 and 6 and then 1 through 4. O Lord, I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt beautifully with me. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God, enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemies say, I have prevailed against him, lest those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Amen. And with that, we conclude this week's Wednesday worship at home service with the ironic blessing. It's the blessing that Pastor Matt bestows upon the congregation every week as they go out into the mission field to work in the ways of the Lord. And the prayer is this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. And with that, I bid you all, Al Vider Sain, um, prayers for safe travels for the family and I as we uh, we head on our adventure 
and uh, I will share some photos of the adventure as well when we get back. So um, looking forward to sharing all that with you. No, we're not going to Germany, unfortunately. <laughs> but anyway, we will uh, we'll we'll see you in, in uh, we'll be here for next week's service. So um, again, auf Wiedersehen. Um, wir lieben dich. We love you. Please go with the blessing of the Lord, knowing that he loves you, he preserves you, he keeps you, he strengthens you, and he provides for you. Have a great week, and I'll see you all next week. Thank you for joining us in our worship service today. If you are in the Pasadena, Maryland area and are looking for a church home, we would love to meet with you and give you more information on our family here at Galilee. Please give us a call here at the telephone number below. We would love to hear from you. If you are not in the Pasadena, Maryland area, but you are looking for a church home, again, please let us know so we can do our best to get you pointed in the right direction. Thank you to everyone who helped and participated during our service this weekend. We are truly blessed to have such a generous and faithful congregation devoted to sharing the word of Jesus Christ with you. And last but not least, if you enjoyed today's service, please click the like or the subscribe buttons to let us know that you enjoyed it. Please leave us comments if you so desire and sign up to receive notifications for our Saturday, our Sunday, and our Wednesday worship at home services. Have a blessed day. And God be praised. Doing all right there, buddy? Huh? Doing all right? Yeah? Thanks for helping me prune. I appreciate that. I do. I appreciate that. Are you going to come say hi? Probably not. Oh, sorry. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Sorry. I know it's a little tight up here. Here, let me move that out the way. There. Oh no.